everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Maddie Lullaby and today I'm going to be doing a basic editing tutorial. Um, I took these self-portraits uh, a couple weeks to maybe a few months ago and I haven't edited them yet. Um, I think we might just edit this picture today. Um, I took some other cool ones but, <laughs> but like this is so unlike me. Um, I kind of like doing self-portraits lately, like, I mean, look at these. These are cool. Anyway, we're just going to do the happy smiley one. I think I did these because I wanted a new display picture on YouTube or whatever. This video was actually requested, so shout out to, I think it was Rachel. So thank you, Rachel. Let's do some basic editing. I also feel a little bit awkward today, like, I don't normally sit down at my computer and <laughs> film my screen and talk to the screen so this is a bit new but if you guys like these videos i can do more advanced ones so whenever i go to correct a photo first of all i'll just start in this little basic tab um, i'll look at my temperature sliders see if the white balance is okay um, white balance is fine here so we won't worry about that um, exposure now this one's a little bit dark but, I mean, when you're editing all of these, you kind of do it to taste. So if you prefer a dark and moody image, obviously you're going to make things a bit darker. Um, you're going to, you know, not, not go like this. <laughs> oh, I can see the details of my dress. That's fun. Um, but yeah, if you like it darker and more moody, or if you like it lighter and brighter and more fun and vibrant, like, like everything has a mood which is pretty cool. Um, I think I am going to boost the exposure on this a little bit. Because um, it is a happy picture. And contrast. So your contrast is going to like, you know, give you contrast. <laughs> I'm so good at explaining things. Oh god, if you can hear my computer. Um, making its wind noises as the fans trying to cool down. I'm sorry, that's really annoying. Anyway, so as you can see, contrast makes things darker and it also makes things lighter and it gives less in between. Whereas if you go less contrast, things become a bit more gray. There isn't really much tonal difference between things. So that's basically your contrast. Maybe I'll up the contrast a little bit just because my skin is very pale, my dress is very dark, um, boosting that contrast is going to look more striking in this image, I feel like. Highlights? I mean, I'm already pretty pale, so maybe just three shadows. Now, this is where things can get interesting. So if you wanted to bring out more details in my dress, you could bring the shadows up so that you can see all these little, like, lacy, frilly bits detailing. Um, but, I mean, it's more striking when you go darker, isn't it? I, I'm liking the darker, although, hmm, okay, I'm gonna go plus eight, there we go. Alright, now whites, this, always check this histogram as well, guys. So, you kind of don't want to blow out any of the shadows, which is here. You don't want to blow out any of the highlights, which is over here. Um, as you can see, my blacks go up. So I have like a, most of my tonal range darker right here. Middle tonal range is here. don't have much here. But I have a, like a little bit of tonal range up in the highlights. Um, if you were to blow out your highlights, you'd slide it all the way here and see how this bar at the very end is blown up. That means I've lost like all this detail in this curtain, not that I care, I'm probably going to get rid of that. But I've also lost detail um, in like some of the, these areas, like the highlights over my nose and my cheeks. Um, yeah, you don't want to do that. Also, if you blow out your, high, your shadows, I mean, I mean, you could go for this look if you wanted to, but I don't really like the heavily contrasted look. Anyway, so whites so basically you can see up here when I push the whites 
um, the tonal range moves closer to the end and that's when I start to lose detail when that bar goes up so uh, we'll leave them we'll leave them here we'll boost them we'll boost them oh it's actually boosting them a lot isn't it okay I'll just boost them to 20 and okay blacks so hmm I do tend to like the darker look although look look can you see that in this tonal range we're losing tonal range when we do this we push them back so maybe I won't push them back oh I will just leave it there clarity um this can be really good when you're trying to edit skin if you like uh, lessen the clarity it's good for like blemishes and things like that um, you probably wouldn't like make this really clarity I mean it's a style everything's a style everything's a choice I think it looks a bit hard on my face and as a woman I want to look soft and beautiful so <laughs> I'm probably I'm going to lessen the clarity a little bit. But generally, I probably don't touch this slider very much. Uh, vibrance. Um, there's a difference between vibrance and saturation. Vibrance is better for um, skin tone. It boosts, like... It just softly boosts the colours of the image, whereas saturation really brings out any colour. Like, like, it just doesn't care. It wants to kill all the skin tones. See, like, this is a nice, like boosting of colors whereas saturation is like oh my god now I'm a carrot I'm going to boost just my vibrant slider um, because I love my red hair and I want to bring that out so 26 that looks pretty good to me um, now this um, on camera raw these are your little tabs and now I've gone over to the tonal curve tab what you can do here is you can do a slight S curve, which is always really nice in photographs. Um, so basically you just bring up, it's like a slight S if you can see that. This S, yep. So you just boost like your highlights a little bit or your lights and then you um, bring down your darks or your shadows a little bit. So I sort of like that, although, I mean, I feel like it's a bit too dark now, so I'm going to boost my shadows a tiny bit. Sharpening. This is the default sharpening. It just sharpens to 25%. Um, I know this image is a bit soft focus. I can't remember what um, settings I put it on, but yeah, you can see it's a bit soft focus. Um... I think that's fine like I don't really care if it's completely in focus as I was telling you guys before I was trying out self portraits and it was kind of dark there you go you'll be able to see it better now there you can see like almost all the little grains and then when you soften it it gets rid of all the little grains it's not that much difference my RSO was only 800 that's not too bad when you get to like 2000 or even 1200 I mean it just depends on the image if it still looks okay I think this is okay this next tab is something that I don't really use very much you can boost certain colors so I mean maybe I could boost my reds oh bring them down oh I kind of like that <laughs> what's that that's bringing down the luminance of my red or I can bring it up and look crazy <laughs> I want to bring it down. That's cool. Saturation. Ooh. I'm so glad I played with this. Oh, wow. That purple hair. Cool. Alright, I'm probably just going to leave it there because that looks sick. Alright, the next tab is split toning, which can be really cool if you're going for, like, a theme. Like, if you have a bunch of photos and you want them to all be blue... Uh, like blue shadows and yellow highlights or something something like that like for instance like this I mean that doesn't really fit this image but I reckon um, this color combo would work well for outdoors maybe 
lens correction is something you should do um, but it just depends like if it works with the image or not so remove chromatic abbreviation can't remember how to say it um, that gets rid of like little color thingies that are around this image it wouldn't happen in this image you can google it if you want to know more about that um, as you can tell I'm not an expert <laughs> But this is the main thing you kind of want to make sure you check. I just always check them both. Um, but see, um, so your lens basically gives you this like lens distortion, which is why it kind of looks like a bubble popping. Um, by selecting the enable profile corrections, it basically takes like the focal point of your lens, what type of lens you use, because like that's all in the metadata. Um, and see right here. That's exactly what I used. It already knows. And when you enable it, it automatically corrects it using all its profiles that it already knows. Which is the power of Photoshop. I think I think I look better without distortion, but sometimes you'd be surprised. People look better with the distortion. Um, not this time though. I'm going to get rid of it. Um, as you can tell as well, the distortion creates like a vignette. So if you wanted to get rid of this, but you still wanted the vignette, you could put it back. Um, I think I will put it back because I liked it. All right, this is effects. If you want to dehaze the image. Whoa, I mean, I don't really play with that, so. And there's some more vignetting. I don't want it. Take it back, take it back. There we go, thank you. This is camera calibration. Um, this can be really fun, okay? So when you see all those really cool edits and you look at the visco filters, everything like that, like cool color edits, I think this is where people mostly play around with their colors to get different, like, tonal looks and styles and things like that. Obviously, like, all these things come into play, but I think especially these do. Um, cool. So I'm happy with this image. I prefer to do like spot removal and all this other stuff like within Photoshop itself and not camera raw. I know you can get a lot done in camera raw, um, but I just prefer to edit in Photoshop. So I would love to show you what it looked like beforehand. You can kind of see um, that one looks fairly similar. So there we go. So this is before. It's fairly a flat image. Um, there's not a lot of pop happening, um, and then in this one, there's a lot more pop. You can see my red hair is coming out, all nice. I brought out my skin tone. Um, I think it looks really good. And then let's finish this off in Photoshop. Okay guys, so I've just been editing this footage, and I've realized that this video is getting a bit too long. So I'm going to split it into two parts. Next time in part two, or whenever I upload part two, um, we do this. So basically we haven't changed that much, but I'll explain what we have changed. I fixed this background. Um, I've also fixed, oh, I can't zoom in properly here, but I've also fixed like some eye wrinkles. This arm was very yellowy in the first image and then I fixed the skin tone here. I've also done some slight dodging and burning on my face. A little bit hard to tell because I did it very slightly but I do go through the whole process with you. I don't know if I'll upload it next week because we actually have some very exciting news. Me and Ryan are going up to New South Wales to meet our corgi puppy. Um, we've been trying to get a corgi puppy for so long and we're gonna finally go up and meet them. So I think next week might be a video on our corgi puppy. Uh, like this video if you liked it, subscribe if you want more. Turn on my notifications if you don't want to miss out on anything. And I'll see you guys next time. Love you all very much. Bye.